a bit hard. Okay, um, so as you heard, he was testing the mic, so we'll, he's very keen, so we'll let him backport his drivers in real time. Yeah, hi, my name is Hauke Mertens. Um, I'm working on the Linux backport, driver backports project, and uh, today I want to present you how to backport um, drivers from the Linux mainline kernel to older kernel versions. Um, yeah, I've been um, working on this project since I think six years or something like this. Um, it was started by uh, Luis Rodriguez. Um, <coughs> yeah, and um, yeah, the main the problem is often um, the develop development in Linux goes on in the mainline work. So um, for the, when, if you want to use new features. You have to use a more a recent kernel version, um, but often you are stuck with some old kernel version, like when you um, get your board support package from your system on a chip vendor and they just support a three years old kernel version or something like this, or you are using an enterprise Linux distribution um, like Red Hat Enterprise or something like this. Um, they are also every time using pretty old kernels. Um, at least when you compare it uh, to what you can download at kernel.org. Um, so when you want to use um, recent, most recent drivers to get support for the yeah, new fancy hardware or to get support for new features in these drivers, um, yeah, you, um, now you, there's a possibility to use your old supported kernel and these new fancy drivers. Um, yeah, the Linux Backboards project um, uh, yeah, first started at Compact Wireless, so it was, was focused on um, wireless LAN drivers. Um, when some other drivers were added, so it was renamed to Compact Drivers and finally renamed to Backboards, I think, um, two years ago or something like this. Um, yeah, currently we support um, backporting drivers from uh, the current Linux Next Tree or the RC kernels from Linux to um, every kernel version between 3.0 to 3.19. Um, yeah, the last time I checked it was about 700 kernel modules. Um, but we do not support all um, drivers on all kernel versions. I think um, for 3.0 um, it was about 200, uh, 120 modules there. So sometimes there is, it's hard to get to backboard them because yeah, some changes are done in some internal kernel subsystem which we cannot backport the interface. We, we cannot backport the interface. Um, so if not that many people are interested in this stuff, uh, we just uh, skip it for that kernel. Um, yeah, currently it contains um, wireless LAN drivers. That's the main focus, but also I two will be eight hundred two. Dot 15, dot 4 drivers, NFC drivers, Bluetooth drivers, media, so that's um, DVB-T, camera, and so on. v so UMTS and this stuff, and some Ethernet drivers. Um, but we also would like, um, if you have some other different drivers from different areas, uh, feel free to send some patches and, uh, yeah, and at best also maintain them. So when we are switching to a new kernel version, um, mostly something breaks. Um, depending on how complex the drivers are. Um, yeah, when you want to use it, um, we provide um, tarballs on our website. You can just download them and build them against these uh, arbitrary kernel versions uh, we support. Um, we are releasing um, tarballs based on uh, the Linux Next Tree, so the most recent stuff you can get, um, the RC kernels from Linux and uh, some stable kernels. Um, <coughs> yeah, it, it often takes some effort to do um, to switch to a new version. So we are currently we are behind, I think, three weeks or something like this. Um, I hope I can catch up in the next few days. Um, yeah, when you want to use it, you can just download. Um, Vitar and um, yeah, untar it, and then use make menu config like you are used to in the Linux kernel. Select the stuff you want to use. Um, it all uh, automatically checks um, that you have the dependencies in your kernel you are compiling against. So um, 
like for Wi-Fi stuff, we need these um, CCM modules in crypto activated. If you do not have them, you do not get this feature. So um, we are directly accessing the kernel config and, check and um, yeah, make sure that nothing is activated, which uh, will not work in the end. Um, so we has co mostly copied um, kconfig from the kernel. Um, yeah, we have also some death configs uh, for commonly used, um, most, yeah, just I want this completely framework or I want this specific driver for some specific um, stuff that's often used by people. Yeah, and in the end you can just compile it with uh, make and install it with make install. Uh, yeah, in the embedded, embedded room this also works with cross-compiling. Um, so it's actually integrated in OpenWRT. The Wi-Fi drivers from OpenWRT are using, uh, uh, coming from this, uh, and in some other dispos. Um, yeah, but you can also, if you, um, if our default tar isn't um, good for you and you want something special, like um, you have your own JIT suite and want to use that, or you do not want to have all the drivers, just your special drivers in um, this tar, you can also generate um, your own tar based on our JIT suite. Um, yeah, you just, this is the example when you want to um, duplic uh, dupl duplicate our work um, and do it on based on Linux Next. Uh, when you use another tree, um, be aware that um, there are patches and so on and other stuff in there. So it could be that um, some patches do not apply anymore because something changed or that um, some module uses some, some function in some header which is not, not backported yet. Uh, so we backport um, the APIs just um, as they are needed by the drivers. We have not um, everything that could be used. So, yeah, when you, you do it with yourself, you probably will run into some problems. Um, but they are fixable, so, um, yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, um, there will probably be some problems when you do not, yeah, when something changes, like um, you use another uh, driver's run in a different kernel version. Um, so our goal is to um, not depend that much on this. Um, <coughs> we have some pet, um, so um, our goal is not to have the, to fork the Linux kernel or yes, to fork the drivers or to fork as, yeah, um, to not copy um, manually less code um, as you can. So um, the process is copying, um, when we generate such a trial, we copy this stuff um, automatically from the Linux kernel, apply some patches on it. Um, we have some semantic patches. Um, with that, it's possible to um, take in, um, to use this uh, C structure. So, like, um, change, uh, rename some member in some struct and so on. We could also do it with a normal patch, but when um, when it's done in 20 different files, it will be a huge patch, which um, will often not apply anymore because some Linux kernel developer changed something. Uh, like they often do. Um, um, yeah, so we try to do some stuff which affects lots of file to um, put into semantic patches, but there are also normal patches. Um, but in general, patches are bad. Um, we try to put it in uh, most of the stuff in header files. Um, yeah, some header files are just copied from the kernel. We take the driver from, like when we uh, copying the subsystem like the um, make 800 um, tool.11 um, subsystem. We are also copying their headers because we want to compile against it. But we cannot copy the headers from like the network subsystem, which is in the Linux kernel, because when, yeah, like a struct, <coughs> there would be a, um, when we um, yeah, think about, um, we have, um, is, uh, is struct in the recent kernel and the driver would compile against it and take, a me um, take that member A is at offset 12, but in the mainline kernel it's at offset um, mm, 8, um, yeah, which will cause some problems and everything will blow up. Um, so we have to be cautious uh, to what um, structures and so on we can copy into our into backports. 
Um, yeah, we have a nice um, way we are more or less extend, try to extend um, existing um, headers, like when there's um, a new function added to include Linux uh, kernel dot age. Um, we um, create a um, yeah, we alter, we include hierarchy for backwards when you compile it and add our header file in front of it. And in our header file, we use this nice include next command, which um, includes the next um, header file in the include hierarchy. Um, so we can just put our stuff directly before or behind the um, original header file from the kernel we compile against. So um, yeah, we have to also, um, every time to think about we have one kernel, we take we copy the drivers from and one different kernel or more or less a set of different kernels we uh, in the end compile against. Um, yeah, we have also have some C code um, backports layer for some bigger functions we export and for some stuff where we need um, to um, yeah, have some static variables and so on in the code. Um, <coughs> yeah, the main goal is um, to make it possible for you to um, upstream all your code and um, um, to have no excuse that, um, yeah, we have to do this uh, um, in our private um, driver package because our customers want to, are using very old kernels and not the recent one. And um, so that's not an excuse anymore. So you can upstream, work on upstream, and um, yeah, use this to provide your customers with um, yeah, your upstream driver working for older kernels your customers are actually using. Uh, and also on the different uh, other side, when you are um, working on a system on a chip and you are stuck to some old kernel version, um, yeah, use this to use the most recent upstream driver, um, try to um, yeah, put your fixes in the upstream driver, upstream then, and um, yeah, use backports for this. Um, yeah, as I said, um, it's uh, used in OpenWRT and um, yeah, some bigger chip vendors are also using it. It's mostly used in the wireless LAN area. So I think at least some um, companies that are working on um, mainline Linux wireless drivers are using this to provide their customers with um, yeah, some drivers for their old kernel. Um, yeah. That uh, was it. Um, yeah, if you want to uh, contact us, we, um, we have a wiki. <coughs> Sorry, um, I feel a little bit cold. Um, we have a wiki, uh, and uh, we have also an IRT channel. Um, you're on it. Um, yeah, do not leave after five minutes, um, like many people do. Um, uh, yeah, do we have any questions now? Yeah? Uh, yeah, I will repeat it, I will repeat it. Um, I, do, I cannot promise that it will work out of the box. Um, at least we um, rename all the functions, um, the backports with, uh, with a macro so that we um, try to avoid um, colliding with um, some backports done by others. Uh, we have the same, um, yeah, yeah, repeat the questions. <laughs> um, the question was um, uh, what happens when we, um, when you have a heavily patched kernel like the Android kernel 3.0 um, or 3.4. Um, um, yeah, but, um, I can promise that it uh, will work out of a box. Uh, we try to, um, we have some back, um, we, try, we rename all the functions um, with some um, preprocessor magic. Um, so that um, we try to avoid collisions with um, someone else doing this backport. We have the same problem with Red Hat Enterprise. They are also very um, backporting very much stuff. Um, 
uh, at least when you, um, most of these um, problems aren't that hard to fix, so yeah, you probably have to fix it. And there are at least some people that are using it on Android devices in production, like um, on the default firmware you get when you buy the phone. Yeah? Uh, yes, see down here. Um, yeah, the question was if it was for all drivers. Um, uh, currently, we only support um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, NFC. I think there was a slide. Um, yeah, um, um, these uh, NFC, Bluetooth, and some stuff. Um, we had some uh, for some time. We had um, um, DRM drivers, so GP for GPUs and so on in there, but it was very, very hard to maintain them because there are lots of changes and the um, DMA system changes and they are heavily depending on new APIs in the DMA system. But generally, it's probably possible to um, include, uh, to backport all drivers, um, at least when you have an, as a module. And um, yeah, there are also some approaches to make it possible to do it in kernel. So yeah, it's possible. So not by default, but um, you have to yeah, extend it. Yeah, in the middle. Sorry, I did not completely get how do you do this in um, per kernel cardboard, or what cardboard should they call? Um, the question was if we <coughs> distributed it in per kernel tarball or one um, tarball fits it all. Uh, the answer is that we have uh, one tarball that fits it all. So, um, um, in the build process, it checks what, ex what kernel it currently compiles against, and uh, so we have one tarball that fits it all. And there are some extensions in there to f also fit some Red Hat Enterprise stuff and this. And <coughs> yeah? Uh, yeah, um, I hope I understood it correctly. The question was um, if we also yeah, backport some other stuff like KD bus. Is it correct? Yeah. Um, uh, I haven't thought about this. Um, sure, it should be possible. Um, uh, the main focus was at drivers, but as long as this is a module, um, I don't see a problem with it. And as long as it does not depend on some fancy in kernel um, structure chains that are in, in the kernel, like the memory management system or something like this. So we cannot backport the memory management subsystem. Okay. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if it's, uh, it's probably somewhere in the internals. And so the question was file sealing could be a problem, but. Yeah, I think uh, that's not possible to backport files. I haven't looked into it. Um, I just assume that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, trends and uh, the question was, um, what do we do when some structures change? That's correct? Yes. Um, yeah, that's always a problem. Um, uh, like for the IEEE 802.15.4 um, subsystem, there was a change done uh, so that uh, now in, I think in the ESCA buffs is a new um, member and um, yeah, when we are mostly stuck with this. So we cannot um, alter any um, uh, structures that are also used by some other kernel subsystem. That's, yeah, impossible. Um, we just could try to back, um, revert the change um, which, uh, so that the um, new driver doesn't need this um, uh, structure anymore. But um, yeah, that's a problem. When it's not possible, when yeah, when we are 
so if you really need this change, uh, it's not possible. Um, yeah, because the, in the, the, the kernel depends on the offsets being like it wants this. And you could, um, you could um, change your kernel, um, your compiling again, so when you are on an embedded device, it's always possible to alter the um, structure that's in the kernel and recompile it, but our goal was to also support like um, the enterprise kernels as they are shipped as binaries. Yeah, here. Uh, the question was, uh, what, is a, what about the device tree? Um, I haven't thought about when this could be a problem. I don't know. Um, Um, yeah, as long as the kernel we compile against um, supports device tree. Okay, when, uh, so if the kernel does not support device tree uh, at all, then uh, yeah, it doesn't uh, work. So um, at least I haven't tried it, uh, um, so it could be, um, but um, yeah, I assume there must be something that passes with device tree and so on, and this won't be there, so yeah, it won't work. Any more questions? Yeah, I think it was, was it? <coughs> 